In this video, I want to go over some common mistakes that can be made and also some troubleshooting um, that might come up uh, while trying to deal with these export scripts. So here on the screen, we have the F18 uh, RWR panel. And for this, uh, we can turn it on and then it has labels that light up on the four buttons here, um, but also has additional labels that can optionally show up above there. So uh, I actually have a profile that uh, someone sent to me and they were having issues uh, getting it working correctly. So they did a good job of setting up these uh, buttons where it's actually two images to cover the bottom part so you could change it with the image state change. Uh, and they have that working with the on and off. And then they did the title text change here uh, for handling the uh, above text. So if you press uh, the button, it'll show up enable. But the problem is when you let go, the enable on the stream deck uh, disappears. And similarly, if you press it, it'll appear for a little bit and, and go away. So uh, what's actually happening here is it's reading the button press. So while it's pressed, it's reading the enable. And when it's let go, it's off uh, and similar for all these cases. So uh, the the common mistake uh, I want to point out is when looking at these ID lookups, uh, if I search for RWR here, if we have the offset um, button, which is what we're testing here, so they set the DCS ID to 269 for the, the image change. And so this 269 DCS ID, this is actually the push button. So when, when the button is pushed in, this value will be one. Uh, and when it's released, it will be zero. Uh, so the problem is with these ID lookups, these are all the clickable data items. So these are not the uh, button the lamps or illuminations. To find those, you will have to look in the export script um, that you are using. And so uh, what, what also can be confusing here is that they generally have both the push buttons and the lamps identified here. So here we have the RWR, um, but again, we see the 269. Um, this is the offset push button. Uh, but if we search for RWR, here you see we have uh, that enable uh, and limit and fail. So uh, let me click some of these. So for this one, there's a fail. And so clear that. Uh, so these are the lamp values. Um, and another thing you notice is that they have both the offset and enable. Uh, so uh, you can actually look for the lamps of the uh, top part and the bottom part um, here. Uh, so I'll get back to that. But so the issue where the troubleshooting comes in is um, if I try to change this to 267, and then press the button, nothing is happening. Uh, and we'll do this display string unaltered to see the, the raw value. And so so what's happening is, um, well, at, at first I wasn't really sure. So these are sent up as um, D for integers here. Uh, so what you can do is you can try change these to like 0.1f or or some other value. Um, so let's just do 0.4f. So that means a float floating point value uh, with four decimal places after the decimal. Um, and so we can try this for all of these and just see what they look like and then change them afterwards. And this is kind of just a, a quick way of doing this. Uh, so I'll save this. Um, and then let me restart the 
mission here to refresh the export script. So now we're back in here, and, and now you'll see on the Stream Deck button a 0, 0.0 with the four decimal places that we specified. So if we turn this on. Now, if we press offset, you'll see it's at some non zero value. And if we turn it off, it's back at zero, and on again. So uh, this. And let me do the same thing for the built-in test. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong. Okay. The fail is 264. Uh, so these, uh, I'm really not sure why it's um, kind of flickering at a a odd value that may be just some rounding issues. I, th I thought it might be related to the dimmer possibly, but it doesn't really change with that. So, um, but what you can see is that it is going to a non-zero value and uh, it's probably just some, some rounding precision. It's not really a four decimal point value. Um, so since it wasn't working at the 1D decimal format. Um, I think what we'll try to do is just set these all to a 0.1 precision float. And restart this again to see how that works. Zoom in here again. So now we have 0, 0.0 here, and now it's it's rounded to 1.0. So that can be uh, used uh, reliably, um, or at least I hope. Uh, so now we'll set this back to the string. Uh, and you'll notice that now instead of 1, we need to type in 1.0 to match it. And now we have the enable working here. And let's do the same for this. Try that. And they clear. Cool. So, uh, and then one other thing to note. So, um, I had mentioned that both the offset and enable lamps were listed here. So uh, what this person was doing originally was just having the image change on 277. So that is, if we look up the RWR again, that's the power button here. So, so since the power button stays depressed, that was working pretty fine. So uh, that can be done. Um, but as an example, uh, let's change it to the um, the actual offset value of 268 there. So this will be when the 268 or offset lamp is greater than zero, it will switch between these image states. And now we turn it off. You'll notice that it it kind of the offset um, turns off before the other uh, buttons. And um, I, I don't really know if it makes a big difference here, but that would I would say that would be the more reliable way of, of setting these um, bottom values, uh, especially for another aircraft where the on button isn't um, doesn't happen to stay stuck in um, when pressed. 
So I was looking a little bit more into the details and one thing I actually noticed after initially recording this was that if we do look at the debug value, so if we click refresh here, we can see the live values. Um, and so let's compare against um, what's reported here. So uh, as we're already checking the enable ID 267 uh, right here is at a 1.0 when it's lit up. Um, however, 268, which is the offset, um, is only listing 0 0.9. So uh, when we did the image straight, image state greater than zero, that, that still works. Um, but if you did just a title text match to equals 1.0, this wouldn't light up. So to check that, uh, let me just add some displays here and we'll just use these for debugging. So uh, this one will do the offset of 268. And this one will look at enable 267. And this will just be so we can see their values in real time a little bit easier. Uh, so the 1.0 and 0 0.9. Um, and so let me switch this back to the 0.4 high precision again. And let's reload this. Okay, so now we see that uh, it's really flickering um, quite a lot. And whereas this one, and let me turn it on, it stays at that like 0.99 value. So um, it turns out that uh, it looks like this is actually tied to the dimming. So as I dim this down, uh, this value decreases. Uh, and the reason this top one was not is because you can actually get down to a dim part where the top row is still shown, but this goes to zero, and then it um, clears away. Or, or I guess it just stays there the whole time. So, um, so this can make things a little bit um, more complicated, or just you should just be aware of um, what what these numbers are doing. So, uh, for this, we can still uh, use the 0.1 f values, and uh, for example, um, look at the. Uh, special was 271. That one was already set at the single decimal position. So as you scroll up, it's 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and up to 1.0. So this uh, we uh, want to, if you're just doing the image state change check of greater than zero, it's pretty simple to handle. Um, but if you are doing uh, the matching a string, if you do 1.0 equals special, um, it won't work unless you're all the way up at uh, full brightness. Um, if, if you still want to get around it, since it's just single precision, you could actually type in the other values um, and that wouldn't be too hard and that would be a way of handling this as well. So now for 
1.0, 0.9, 0 0.8, it works, but for 0.7 and below, uh, it's blank. Uh, so those are just some, some ways you can handle the export values and uh, hopefully kind of my walkthrough of my thought process of debugging this is helpful to some of you out there.